tonight from the State Department of Agriculture. A brand new bird flu has now hit the Bay Area. 10 News reporter Erica Pitsy joining us live tonight from Pinellas County. And Erica, I understand this is where the disease was first detected. What have we found out? Yeah, that's exactly right there, Mal. It was actually all thanks to the Suncoast Seabird Sanctuary of Indian Shores. Of course, that's here in Pinellas County. They have rescuers that go out on a usual basis weekly to look for injured birds that they bring back and rehabilitate. But just last week, they went out and found a handful of birds that were clearly sick. Native to Florida, the cormoran is a small black bird. You've probably seen them diving underwater or drying their wings. At the Suncoast Seabird Sanctuary, these cormorants are healing from injuries, much different from the ones rescuers recently found that suffered from these symptoms. Mostly neurological, uh, muscular, some twitching. Those are signs of the exotic Newcastle disease, and for birds, it's deadly. The sanctuary quarantined the cormorants and alerted the Department of Agriculture of Florida's first case of the disease since 2002. Fortunately, the sanctuary's birds were not infected. So all of our birds are fine and healthy. There are more than 300 birds being rehabilitated here at the sanctuary, and normally they release some of those birds on a weekly basis, but because of this disease, they are not releasing any birds anytime soon. While the staff at the sanctuary should be careful since they handle birds for a living, health experts say the general public does not need to worry. The Pinellas County Health Department told 10 News that the disease is, quote, not really harmful to humans, although those who come into contact with infected birds experience pink eye and some minor irritations. <laughs> The Florida Department of Agriculture says it's concerned for all other birds, including the poultry industry. It's such a serious disease that it, if it did become established in our domestic birds, um, there would be an agricultural emergency declared. It's too early to tell how widespread the disease is, but no doubt watchful eyes are looking out. And people with pet birds need to keep an eye out as well for those symptoms that are muscular tremors and coughing and what we talked about in the story as well, some of those neurological symptoms. Now, the state urges anyone with birds, whether you are around birds at all, domestic, barnyard, if it's a pet or you work out in the wild here, just like those rescuers that go through the mangroves looking for injured birds, everyone needs to constantly wash their hands, disinfect their shoes and their clothing, and of course, let the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services know if you come across any of the birds that you believe have this disease. We're live in Pinellas County. Erica Pitsy, 10 News. Hi, everybody. This is Carol Stanley with Aviculture TV. And tonight we're talking with Fred Smith, the regional director for AFA in Florida and Puerto Rico. And where else, Fred? The Virgin Islands. At Virgin Islands. All right. Um, Fred, we wanted to talk about exotic Newcastle disease. I know there was a um, an outbreak um, in wild birds that was discovered by the uh, Suncoast uh, Bird Sanctuary on the uh, west coast of Florida. That's kind of in the middle of the peninsula there, isn't it? Yes, it was uh, there in Pinellas County, just in um, the south uh, south part of Tampa area. Okay, so what what's gone on to date, and what can you um, let our viewers uh, know about exotic Newcastle disease, and what they should be looking for, and uh, how they should be uh, practicing biosecurity? Well, it's um, you know this. Uh, Newcastle's outbreak was found in some cormorants, and um, uh, it's very slim chances it would get uh, uh, spread into the pet bird industry, but, um, you know, it's always possible. So we need to take precautions. Uh, one of the precautions is, you know, if you have uh, exotic birds, just don't, uh, just stay away from any uh, waterfowl, especially the cormorants. Um, and, uh, you know, if you see an injured one or, or one that appears to be sick, you just call authorities, but don't, don't handle it. Um, you know, and as long as you stay away from uh, these types of birds, uh, the chances are, are going to be much slimmer that uh, we would uh, uh, transmit this into the pet bird population. Uh, some of the things, precautions that you need to take is disinfect uh, your clothes. Uh, after you've been around uh, other type of birds and uh, use hand sanitizer 
and um, uh, you know, I, I would say refrain from going around any other bird facilities that uh, houses uh, wildlife, uh, wild type birds, uh, waterfowl, uh, because this is a extremely contagious uh, disease, and it can be fatal to birds, most all types of birds. So we just need to um, use our biosecurity the best we can, and um, and uh, take all precautions as possible. Okay, good. That's a excellent advice. And then, um, Fred, from from what you've heard, what is uh, what are the the signs a bird has um, exotic Newcastle disease? What what are the symptoms? Well, if the humans, uh, a, a pink eye would be one, or a, a skin rash uh, would be the um, uh, another symptom. Uh, it's not fatal to humans, but um, but you can get uh, rashes from it. Oh, as I see. Well, as the pink eye. But but how do you recognize it in birds? What what symptoms do the birds get with it that have uh, exotic Newcastle disease? You some of the symptoms of the birds are going to be uh, coughing or uh, muscular tremors, uh, a neurological problem, or drooping of the wings. Uh, or uh, swelling around the eyes, or discharge uh, from the eyes of the the beak or the uh, 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 nares. Uh, this is the main symptoms that you'll see in a bird. But uh, initially, you're going to see some uh, neurological problems, uh, inability to hold their head up properly. Uh, these are the main symptoms you'll see. Oh, okay. And in Florida, who is the, um, um, what department is, is overseeing the, um, this outbreak and monitoring um, the, the outbreak? Well, this is um, uh, Department of Agriculture, Florida Department of Agriculture and the State Veterinarian's Office, but also the USDA is involved in this because this is a reportable disease, so uh, the federal governments are definitely uh, involved in this. Um, we stay in close contact with the Florida Department of Agriculture and uh, with um, uh, Dr. Tom, Thomas Holt, uh, the state veterinarian's office. And um, uh, so if there's any updates or any changes then uh, or any other birds that they find uh, tested positive, then uh, <clears throat> they notify us and keep us updated. Okay, is there a central place that people can find out, or could we ask you to notify us of any changes or outbreaks? Well, we um, uh, we posted on the AFA website um, of this uh, <clears throat> disease, and then if there's any updates, we'll post it on there as well. And uh, then I'm sure um, we can get the information to the uh, to you for the um, agriculture. Uh, dot TV website as well. Uh, we're working to notify all the bird clubs, uh, giving them any updates in Florida of uh, what's going on, as well as we've been in contact with all the uh, promoters of the different bird shows going on in Florida, so that they're all aware of this. Okay, so no shows have been canceled. Everything's going on as as usual until if and when something does happen that would uh, um, make those stop. Yes, that, that's right, because the, the protocol is for with USDA that, um, you know, if there is any outbreak, say, in, in uh, uh, exotic birds, that um, immediately there would be a, a quarantine uh, of the area. No birds could be taken in uh, or taken out or brought in. And uh, all bird shows and uh, and uh, gatherings of the birds would uh, uh, be stopped uh, until the uh, outbreak is cleared up. So it, it can be, you know, there's a good protocol set in place so that if uh, it becomes a, uh, more of an epidemic that uh, we can control it, just like they have in California. All right. Now, um, has there been any any further um, findings of birds um, with exotic Newcastle di disease since the first three um, uh, cormorants that they found? 
Uh, no, there hasn't been any more since uh, the uh, three that that was tested positive, and uh, and they were actually the Suncoast Avian Society. Uh, excuse me, the Suncoast uh, Bird Sanctuary had um, uh, brought in birds that uh, appeared to be sick, and then when they watched the uh, reactions of the birds, and notified the uh, authorities because they felt that there was something you know, definitely wrong with them. So uh, it was good that they notified authorities to uh, have them tested. And um, they have tested other birds out in this same area, but they have not found any more that have tested positive. Oh, well, that's good. So this may be the, um, the last that we have to talk about this. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Well, we just, we just must... Um, take all precautions to protect our birds. This is what we're doing and uh, as Dr. Holt said he, he, he didn't, uh, he says the cormorants are, are uh, it's common for them to do, to have the exotic Newcastle disease but it's usually a non-pathogenic and um, <clears throat> so there's no issues with it but these cases were um, a pathogenic uh, state and um, uh, so then we, we got to take more precautions Okay, well, thanks, Fred, and I'm sure that uh, everybody in aviculture in Florida and uh, across the United States is happy that you are overseeing and keeping us uh, abreast of what's going on. So I thank you for that, and thanks for joining us on Aviculture TV. Okay, thank you for having me.